Hey guys, welcome back once again to the Tournament of Legends 2 European Qualifiers number one. My name is Blue, joined today by Jebro. And we're here for our second quarterfinal now, which is going to be between High Impact and Anarchistic Gaming. We do have to give a bit of an update very quickly though, as there was uh, an issue with that llama giveaway we just did. Unfortunately, the person that won um, is already going to get one, as he's a <laughs> member of the team, one of the teams we just saw play. And at the current stage they're at, both those teams are going to get llamas already. And because they're account bound, unfortunately, they wouldn't be able to get a second one. So, with that said, we will still have five more llamas to give away, as that one didn't technically count. So we'll be doing an extra llama giveaway at some point during the stream. So make sure you guys are sticking around for that. So we'll, we, we will be rerolling that llama versus new one, and unfortunately can't win two because they're account bound. But, back to business here. Jebro, what do you think of this matchup? Well, I mean, High Impact, I'm really, really, really impressed with them in the recent uh, ESL Wicked Cup thing. We only saw them once before, maybe um, another time as well, but really, quite notably, really performing quite well in the last uh, Weekly Cup. Um, and they're a very mobile team. They do have a Mesmer, they do have uh, a Thief as well. And this is their full normal lineup as well. They almost had to uh, sub the Thief, I do believe. So I think they're quite happy that they didn't have to do that. I do believe their last couple of games before coming here were quite strong performances as well. Managed to catch a couple of them. Um, I didn't man manage to ki catch uh, Anarchistic. I'm not sure I've heard of this team before either. Um, I'm not sure if you, if you have at all. Uh, I have not, actually, so... Just trying to look as they're sitting around the fire at the moment. Looks like they're telling stories. <laughs> telling stories of their battles in the past. And they're going to do quite well. I, d I don't know. I mean, it's... I don't know the team. It's going to be very interesting just mm -hmm. on that side. I and mean, with the two warriors, it's, more, it's a bit more cheesy. Um, that's for sure, which is always going to be tough. But they do have Popsy, the uh, Mebs, uh, the Mesmer, the very massive Mesmer Char, um, who I do believe I have played against before, and he's a bit of a pain. Um, he's running a portal at the moment, so he's going to be very mobile around the map. Um, so it's going to be quite good. Not having the FIFA, of course, is going to, you know, make slow them down a little bit. So we'll see how well they get around the map um, with that portal. So it's going to be an interesting match. All right, guys, so we'll go over the red team builds very quickly. Vilex over here running with Dagger Dagger, Celestial Room to the pack. Elementalist over here, 00266 once again. Very supportive, a pretty decent damage for an Elementalist build as well. Be very useful in mid fights as well as on side of engagements. Kind of took the place of the Spirit Ranger, so for anybody that remembers in the previous meta when that build was played, it's kind of taken the same spot. Zwydek, the first warrior for this team, is running with 2062, 606, running with an Eviscerate build, so sword and offhand, or apologies, axe with an offhand sword with a long bow here, Soldier's Amulet and Runes of Strength, so again, very big spike that'll come out into play there, but it'll also be pretty big, it'll also be pretty tanky here due to the Soldier's Amulet, but that spike will come into play through those Sigils of Intelligence when he swaps it off, we'll have plenty of Might Stacks through the Runes of Strength, and that boosted with the 100% chance to crit will cause a very big spike of damage to come out through the Eviscerate once again. Moving on from that, we've got Apate over here on on Guardian, running with a Cleric's Amulet, Runes of the Soldier, Mace with an offhand focus and stop. So again, pretty typical stuff here for Guardian is running with altruistic healing build. So it is gonna be a little more selfish compared to the virtues, which could help out his teammates a little bit there. But overall, we're not gonna fault him for that as it is very important that he stays alive too, as well as his teammates. Grimmy Neutron over here, the second mm. warrior for this team, running with 00626, very anti Kondi as we can see here with Signet of Stamina and Berserker Stance. And other than that, it's gonna be fairly typical Hambo here with Soldier's Amulet. So once again, I'll be running the tank variant of that. And then last but not least, Puffsy Powerpuff is playing standard Shatter 44006. Lots of spike, but is rather squishy depending on if he's watching his positioning or not. Interesting though to note is that he's running with offhand pistol compared to the usual greatsword and staff weapon combos that we see. So it'll be sword, pistol, and greatsword. It's a bit of a change up there once again. But with that said guys, I think we're just about ready to get started with round one. So let us begin. That sword's going to be good for him. If he can get that Blurred Frenzy off, that's going to be horrible for someone in the face. And it's going to be good for Cleave as well. If there's not much damage coming onto the corpse, um, onto him, he's going to be able to cleave that body down quite quickly, hopefully, for him. Um, so, yeah, some some nice builds there. Some a nice idea from the uh, Elisa go for the uh, Rune of the Pack there with the Swift Inspiration. So he's going to be actually be a little bit more mobile than uh, normally and then he would. So that's going to be quite good for them. Uh, it's quite, quite a nice game. Excited. Let's do this. 
All right, so we're just waiting for the ready up from Angel Chaos here, and then we shall get started. Excellent match about to come up here, guys. We've got four more games, and the first one is starting right now, so let us get going with our second set of the day between Anarchistic Gaming and High Impact here at the Tournament of Legends. First European qualifiers. Let's do this. All right, guys, so once again, we are on Legacy of the Fofire Gates opening up in three seconds. We are looking at a cross that'll be coming in here from High Impact. Triple cross comes out from them. Their Guardian probably going to head through the beach and then head up over here towards mid, while the Warrior and the Thief cross over there towards the red team's home note. Now, Apate does catch on to this, so he's going to be hanging out in the middle of the field. We're currently looking at Violex's point of view. They just came out of stealth here, so Mati, though, leaps past Violex there and jumps immediately onto a Zwydek here to try and knock him down here. Unfortunately, again, with him being a Warrior, is able to take quite a bit. No! Oh, nice! Eviscerate comes out there and absolutely decimates Mate's skills theory. Whoa. Just managed to catch that. Thankfully, did have the auto-seek there as because Mate went into stealth, but he got that off just before he went into stealth, so was able to hit that down. So now with that said, though, the blue team gonna have to bring in the big cooldowns to get him back up. Banner being used, but Mate will still be back up and into play. But again, red team also bringing in a lot more extra pressure over here, too. Would have been nice, really, for... I'm not sure if he had the cooldown, but Blurred Frenzy would have been, you know, a really good move to pull out on Matt's there. Just going for the down really wastes a lot of time, and then the Guardian was able to come in, so they should have just gone for the damage. It was so low, but unfortunately, they didn't actually manage to get that off. Z uh, uh, Zw Zwidek, Zwidek. Sorry. Zwidek. On the point Zwidek. Zwidek, Zwidek, Zwidek I think, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, at the moment, this fight's... Mm, Still, still okay. It should be okay for Red, hopefully. We'll see how that goes. I mean, it was going to be two versus one over on the uh, midpoint at the moment, but that fight's gone into a, a two by two versus two. But we do see Taiju and also Angel versus Grim and Apase here over on the midpoint at the moment. This fight's fairly neutral. The only real pro person that's having any kind of problems was uh, Grim, but his health is probably going to be okay in the long run. Pupsy going down over on the uh, mine node at the moment as well. Vilix is also down, so mine is going to be secured by blue very shortly as uh, Vilix goes into Miscorns, trying to get the res from uh, the other warrior who's just come in as well, just when he respawns, come over to mine. So this is actually quite good. They did, so they've actually kept the fight to a 2v2, so it's a nice rotation really for me to keep the fight going, but they do need to get that decamp very quickly. And indeed, moving back over here to the red team, so I'm going to just check things out. Zwydek trying so hard to eliminate Lightbeon, but even if he does knock him out, you've still got the Bunker Guardian just waiting out of the wings here. Blue team literally has no interest in middle, and you can tell that because the Guardian's sitting off node. That's the team fight, and with him being away from the fight there, you can tell that he's not really too worried about kind of like if they lose middle there. That's kind of just what they're doing to buy time, and they've even managed to take control of that. So high impact here, really, really just dominating here in the first round. Yeah, they, they've... Oh, God. That's, that instant push, that, that push to far was a morale destroyer. It's just like, here we are, we're going to completely just own your face. And that's what they wanted to do, you know, putting the fear in the face of the opposite team. And really quite early on, it's just, you know, it's kind of called an issue. But Red managing to go for the uh, far point now, going for the Henge, which of course is the close point for the blue team. And now coming out, they just need to be careful that they're keeping someone on that back point. Just the Angel is actually coming in now. They need to be aware that he's not going to get that decap. No one is aware and he's going to fully get it when blue and red are fighting off point easy decap and if angel stands there could probably even get the full cap but it, uh, currently there is people down and around this cap is very messy over here at the hench fire at the moment and indeed we do see here a lot of red team guys falling into the down state pupsy's down vilex is down here and there's just huge amounts of corks coming in from monse V over here you can see at the moment with cluster bombs is rolling on him angel on a vilex pupsy's been completely knocked out here and red team just really struggling to get their stuff together here. Zwydek along with Apate are finally going to get control of the mine over here. But that was because Blue Team had to pull so many guys back there in order to get back control of the Henge. So with that said, Blue Team will still have plenty of time considering that both teams are kind of recovering from a fight here to get themselves over towards middle. So they're going to be able to reinforce themselves there. They've even got their warrior Lapion chilling back over there towards the home node. And we're probably going to go into another even engagement on mid, with un which unfortunately... I don't have high hopes for Anarchistic Gaming to win this next mid fight here, just based on how things have been going so far. But... We're gonna have to wait and see. The, the, the problem at the moment they're having is the regroup. 
You know, I mean, if they're going to go for the point, they know that their guys are going and they know that they're going to switch because they've actually gone for Henge. They failed there, so they're going to switch points. It's just kind of almost a natural thing that most teams would do, especially in like team kills, a standard thing. But unfortunately, they kind of wandered into the point two people going up against four when the point is capped or low. They do have the decap actually at the moment. So I do believe there's quite a lot of stealth coming out um, around around this but point at the moment. The, but the issue is that the issue is that they've had to put all five of their guys on this mid fight to make any pressure on it, and that's left their homeboy yeah. open, which Light Beyond just waltzes over there and takes huge abuse of that. So even if again, exactly. even if Red Team does take control here, the Blue Team still got the double cap, and I think in all honesty, that high impact is focused more on the side cap than they are on the middle cap. They don't care too much if they lose middle so long as they're holding the two side points, which so far they've been doing pretty much without any issues whatsoever. And they can just be that offensive that Red won't even think about half the time going towards <laughs> Um, the opposite fight because they haven't got the thief to kind of sneak around there unfortunately but they did come back with the portal but it was just too late so just a bit of a timing issue so the planning was there um, you can see some moves coming out from these guys so it's just a bit of practice here and there and just a bit of experience which again uh, these guys need to build up Aparte now going down he went down mid so blue will get the mid red having mine and also so two cap from blue and red need to try and come back into this game quite quickly so they're only just about to hit 50 points versus 310 and indeed here the game is rolling ahead for our blue team with high impact like he just said there over almost at a 300 point lead here at the moment they'll be then about 20 points here they are really struggling to try and get something back they have managed to get violix over here towards the henji is going to be engaged in a 1v2 however and with guardian trollable in that fight violix probably is not going to be doing so well because even if he does get the spike damage off on a taiju they will have guardian there ready to go to heal him back up and keep him up and rolling back over here at the mine seeing what we've got going at this point as Violex is about to go down Zwydek in a 2v1 against Matze and Lipion he's not doing so hot here either doesn't have endure pain or anything like that a pups are going to try to come in does get that mass invis off so there is a chance he could get him back up but again you got you got Lipion over here you've got Matze with cluster bombs so again that's probably not going to oh now they're both in the down state and now and now Grimmy Neutron going to try to come in here and save the day but once more I do feel that he's just going to fall into way too much corpse leave and end up eliminating himself from this fight here too Red Team again and this was an issue in the last game too where the rotations are just coming in too slow they're not getting to the nodes in time and it just becomes a game of lemmings where one guy rolls off the cliff and gets dps down by the blue team and the other two just follow him along there so unfortunately that is going to allow blue team to take that fight just pretty like easily that. due to the slow blue rotations from anarchistic point. gaming now one thing that could have they red team could have done which i'm not sure the warrior thought of as he was down is that he would did have vengeance off cooldown so he could have actually vengeanced up and he could have just rezzed up the mesmer i think he would have got him he would have been you know he would he was still on quite a quite high hp when he was in the down state there was a little bit of res coming off onto him so i think the warrior could have got him up he probably would have gone down anyway in the end but he would have contested the point for for a little bit more time so just things like that are really really good things to note um, people can do. When you're in Vengeance, you can still res up a player. So that was something that maybe he could have changed up. All right, so once again, the only fight we've got really going on the map here is going to be over here at the Hens. There is going to be a small engagement having to get the mine to two warriors going against each other. There's a member of the red team, Pupsy, down over on the beach, but with uh, with, the, with the blue team thief, Monte, going across that. Yeah, Grimmy Neutron is going to kind of go up against that thief there, too, on beach. So we got that fight going on. But then a big fight happening over here on the Hens. You can see a lot of pressure going on to Guardian Troll at the moment, but at the same time, over here towards the side, you can see the Taiju very, very low, making good use of the LOS by hanging out on the side here and trying to just mm. let his clones do the work and Shatters do that. But once more, his teammates are still suffering over here in mid. I believe Angel Chaos once again has gone to the downstate. Taiju may have to come in and get his hands dirty here, but no, unfortunately, going to be a bit too late in that regard. Angel Chaos will get completely knocked out. Taiju cannot get on the node to contest, so only Guardian Troll is left here. And with the three members of the red team being here, and with them all being fairly tanky too, you've got uh, again Zwydek over here on Warrior. He's pretty, he's pretty buffy. He's pretty buffed up there. Uh, you've also got again uh, who is this? Again, you got the Bunker Guardian Apate, who's probably going to be the tankiest member on the team, and then Violix as well, who can hold his own for quite some time. Unfortunately. Taiju being the only main damage source is not going to be able to do much of this team fight. So once again, it's just going to be another loss for the blue team. And with that, game one will go pretty dominantly in the control of our blue team here. High impact. And they will now be up 1-0 in the set and one victory away from moving on to the qualifier match to take on lunch. Yeah, this is going to be the, the rounds. This round is going to be just the round where we see, you know, the lesser known teams, maybe the inexperienced teams, and we might see high score defeats um, at this point in the game. So just just to kind of note that. But we have seen some impressive stuff come out from the red team. Some, you know, some inexperience. It's just they need to be in these kind of competitions to build it up. And we hope we're going to see them um, indefinitely in the future. But they still have, of course, the next game to see if they can come back 
which is totally possible, especially with this Mesmer, they can be quite mo mobile around the map, hopefully. Mm -hmm. Could be seeing some nice portal plays, but that of course does fall on the question of if our red team will be able to pull those off. So Legacy, once again, for those who are unfamiliar, as we head into the game cameras here, it's the big map ends up leading to probably some of the longer games that we end up seeing in Guild Wars 2 here. As with all maps, it's a three-point capture map, but again, the middle node is larger than any other node in the game here, probably about double the size of any of the other capture nodes, which does lead, which does lead to very elongated, very drawn-out mid-fights, which, in all honesty, might end up having the midpoint decapped for pretty much the entire game. We've seen that happen a few times, too, but we'll have to wait and see if that is going to be the case here. There is obviously a secondary objective to consider, as well as with all Guild Wars 2 maps. Back over here, we do have the Lords that'll be spawning in the blue team base back here, and in the red team base back here. He's surrounded by four NPC defenders, but if you manage to kill the Lord, it's going to give you 150 out of the total 500 points that you do need to win, so it's very crucial if you're able to take that down, and it will boost your stats up by quite a lot. We've seen teams again, if you rush it past 350, it's instantly going to win you the game, so we may be seeing that here as well if, uh, if we need a last minute rush play. But once again, guys, the game is getting started, so let us begin once more with Anarchist Gaming versus High Impact in round two of this qualifier here. Yeah, I'm, pu I'm pulling for the blue team, not the blue team, I'm, I'm pulling for the blue team as well, but I'm pulling for the red team just to see if they can come back into this game. I really think that they could just... They they just need to get some morale I've boost noticed, into this game. I've noticed that a lot of these I've noticed that a lot of these matchups does come down to a sort of morale thing and kind of how the initial parts really? of the game go. So I think I think a lot of this match specifically for Anarchist the game is gonna come down to how the first fights win. They really need to make sure that they have the correct numbers in the correct place and that they are very quickly ending these fights and taking caps. Because again, if they fall behind, I've noticed again with newer teams like this that when they do start to fall behind, they have a lot of trouble coming back into the game. And especially on this map too, because it's so easy to defend points once you've gotten them. So if Red Team does want to try to come back in this game, they need to get their stuff together at the beginning right now it's, it's so true and actually what, what we've just seen over in quarry is actually um the warrior the red warrior was left on the point versus two blue team but then it was as if the mesmer went to go and get a parte to come in to support this fight so that they can actually get rid of it quite quickly do some damage using that portal again i think he just went back to mid i'm not too sure no actually. no he only he only portaled right next to him he had to try and yeah, he had to try and juke away from Matze, but that was not okay. going to go too well, unfortunately, there. Because Matze, again, has got plenty of shadow steps, able to get right next to him once again, and just took him right down there with a backstab. So that'll knock Pupsy out. Grimmy Neutron, as well, is down over here in middle. Violet's going to try to come in. Violet might have necessary cooldowns to save not only himself here, and yeah, he is actually going to be have enough to get Grimmy Neutron back up. But like I was saying, did have to use quite a few cooldowns over here in Water Tomb. And as you can see, all of his healings, all of his heals have already been used, so he too is going to run out of stuff here. And now he's going to go into the downstate, and Angel Chaos will come in here to stomp him out right now. So we, I think we're going to see probably uh, Popsy going towards the far point at the moment. It's the kind of the obvious choice of where to go. Someone will probably be starting to watch that by a point. Doesn't look like Angel might just pop like up. Um, just to have a look. Yeah, there the we point. go. Angel's just going to try and engage uh, Popsy over on the waterfall. Probably might get a little bit of backup. No, not too sure. But I think Red. You know, the problem with um, the midpoint being contested is it's very, very, very easy to just but say send people to mid. We don't want them to get the free cap. But at the same time, it might not. It's not going to do them any favors, but if they do get this free cap, which is very likely going to happen, this is really going to snowball so oh, heavily yeah. in their favor. The blue team, red team does kind of have a saving grace though if they do end up kind of spreading themselves out and going for the three cap. And the fact that it is going to put them in much smaller numbers on many of the nodes, it is going to give the red team much mm -hmm. more opportunities to go for back caps and in general take very quick fights in 2v1 and outnumbered scenarios. But they have to look out for that. They have to communicate. They have to tell their teammates, all right, we have this many people here. We have this many people here. That means this node's open, so someone go grab it right now. They have to be doing that sort of stuff. And if you're not doing that, then the blue team's still just going to, the blue team's still just going to out rotate you all the time. And... <laughs> It's, and I watched, I just, just literally on mid, we were talking about the rotations, Taiju planting the um, portal down, came back from the portal, wasn't obviously too sure where the warrior was, took one look at him, knew he was going to eviscerate and dodged it. Such a nice little move from Taiju there, quite an impressive little mesmer as we did see um, on the ESL Weekly Cup as well, so really nice little move from him actually, it was quite impressive. But um, Swidek really going down to Cleave now on the point. No one even bothering because he can go down to that AoE damage. Chaos Storm coming down on him towards the end of that. So two versus two, I think, over on the mid at the moment. Taiju and Mats, actually, the squishier players in this team versus uh, Vivex and also um, Grim Neutron at the moment. 
So the red really needs to start thinking about getting into this game really quickly because Lifeborn's actually going for the gate over on the Lord at the moment as well. So Blue are thinking about finishing this pretty quickly. Yep, and again, if they're able to pull that off, they've got a decent amount of burst on their squad over here. You've got Taiju on Mesmer along with Matze on Thief. So that in itself is going to be a fairly decent amount of spike burst that can very quickly end the Lord's life if they're able to coordinate that. So not surprising considering that they're going to, considering the burst they have, they're going to try to go for an early end game here. They're, and they, you know, they're only a hundred points away to guarantee that they're going to get that win. I mean, there's not even any kills coming out from Red at the moment. Just, I think the first, the first game was enough almost to kind of, you know, really put them out of it, yeah. and almost in the kind of morale way. It's, it's really the way it will go, and it's the inexperience and stuff of these teams is very, very, very clear. Um, at the moment, but some solid performances still coming around the map, and hopefully, at the moment, uh, we can't really say that Red are going to be able to come back. No, into this it's not looking good. We were just watching Angel Chaos over here. He's been kiting Zwydek and Apote for the past 30 to 40 seconds here once again, with Apote going down. Angel Chaos that is coming with Stab to knock him out, and even with Angel Chaos versus Zwydek, we, like I said, they were just kiting each other around there, and Angel Chaos was kiting Zwydek for like 40 seconds. So yeah, Zwydek's smart about this. He's going to, nope, this is not worth fighting this. He's on Staff Ellie. I'm never going to kill the Staff Ellie, so mm -hmm. let me just head back into mid where I've got teammates hanging out here already, and where we do have a chance to kill a thief or something like that, let's head over there and try to take that fight back. It's just all about... It. It's tough as well, because they need to pick these Good matchups. eviscerate. Took Matze down oh. there. To inter Sorry to interrupt you there, but he manages nice. to just cut that off there once again. Yeah, but again, good. not much Corpse Thief comes in from the Red Squad, so they'll very easily get Matze back up. But Guardian Troll actually did take quite a bit of damage from the Corpse Thief in the process for what was there of it. Does try to go in and connect in another eviscerate here, as Wydeck does, but once again, thankfully, Guardian Troll did have his invulnerability build, the ultimate, um, the, the renewed focus there available, so he was able to pop it off and force the missile there by Zwydek. Do you like those eviscerate hits? You're just like, whoa, yeah. instant destruction there. Yeah. Oh, Popsy off point. Poor little man. Feel sorry for him. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this... It's, a re it's really tough, and we're probably going to get some replies. This is a massive stomp and everything, but they, you know, this this is kind of the round where we're going to see these teams playing, and we want to show these teams off. We want to want to get these names out there, and um, now you guys know all five members of the red team. You know, Zwydek, you know, Vivek, Vivek sorry, uh, Grim and Neutron, Popsy, you know, Aparte as well. So when you see them in game, you're going to be like, yeah, these guys played in Tournament of Legends. They got to the third round, first qualifier. It's pretty good going, in my opinion. And indeed it is, but the game is going, unfortunately, somewhat one-sided here with uh, with high impact, just rocketing ahead. 428 points and a double cap. Red Team did finally get on the map there, though, so we have to give them that. <laughs> they got Guardian Troll a little knocked out, so they were finally able to get points on the map. But unfortunately, again, going up against an experienced team such as High Impact, who has been playing in the Weekly Cups for quite a few weeks now, and with a squad that probably is someone new. I do remember these guys asking for a couple roster changes uh, about a week ago, so I think these guys in themselves are still somewhat of a new roster. So, unfortunately, not going to be much of a match for High Impact here. So with that said, we'll, we'll probably be looking at High Impact moving on to the qualifier rounds to take on I Love Lunch, which again is also another veteran team to the European scene. Indeed. We're moving into that round, it's just gonna it's gonna be you know, it's gonna be a lot more even. We're gonna mm -hmm. see a lot more even games. We're gonna see some little grudge matches going on. We've seen in other ESLs where we've seen, you know, very close games coming into play as well. And I think that's gonna happen in the next couple of rounds. And I'm pretty excited about it. We're gonna see but they, High Ampeg deserve to win. They deserve to be where they are. And of course, the red team did have to win two games in themselves to get to where they are. So there's absolutely taking nothing away from the red team whatsoever. And here we have it, guys. With that said, High Impact is going to take the 2-0 here. They will move on to the qualifying rounds. And that's going to be the end of this set. So, once again, we've got another Llama to give away in the chat for you guys. So make sure you are paying attention to the chat when we start that off. Make sure once again that you are following the channel. And don't put the numbers in until Nightbot says go, because I saw quite a few of you doing that. If you put the number before he says go, it's not going to count. So we got five Llamas to give away. We're going to give away one during this break. We might give away two during the next break. So make sure you keep your eyes out for that. And once again, if you guys would like to keep up with the discussion, be sure to join us over at Facebook.com slash Misspedia. We've got a lot of articles going up over there where you can talk about today's events and stuff like that. And we do a lot of gem giveaways and stuff over there. Too, so if you're interested, make sure you go and like us over on Facebook. You can also follow us on Twitter over at twitter.com slash misspedia, I believe, or just at misspedia. And make sure you follow myself and Jebra over there too, as I think me and you do some gem giveaways as well, right? Hells yes, we do. All right. 
So we have our next match coming up here in just a few minutes. It is going to be 55 HP Monks taking on, I believe it'll be Pizza with Nutella, yeah. So 55 H Monks versus Pizza with Nutella coming up in just a few, guys. Stick around.